Hi, and welcome to the Surefire ClickBank Mastery video course. This specific video is the purpose is to get you in the mindset of understanding ClickBank, understanding how ClickBank is beneficial for you, to give you a quick overview of this whole video course itself, and to prepare you and get you into the mindset and get you excited about using ClickBank. And we're also going to talk about the tools that you're going to need. Now, some of you are already going to know this information, but some of you, you may not know this information and you want to know more about ClickBank and uh, how it can help you and what kind of options it provides to you so that you are aware uh, what options ClickBank provides you and so forth. So let's go ahead and get started. So why ClickBank Network? Well, the good thing about using different payment processors is this. Uh, you may already be aware of this, you may not. But if you know what PayPal is, PayPal is a well-known payment processor. The only problem with PayPal is they are known to freeze and shut down accounts without notice. And it's actually happened to several business partners of mine and many, many business partners. If you run your business purely on PayPal, then imagine all of your business is running through PayPal. PayPal has the ability to shut down your account at any time and they can freeze the account so you can't get the money. This means that you don't have anyone else to go with. So this is why you want to use different payment processors if possible. So, you know, if it happens to you, this means that if you do have an affiliate program and you're just using PayPal, in this case, when they shut down your account, you can't use, you can't pay your affiliates. Your affiliates get pissed and angry at you. In fact, I remember when I was promoting a product four years ago, I made over $700 in affiliate commissions. And to this day, four years later, I still have not heard from that person. Um, but I heard from a friend of mine who asked me to promote the product. And I found out through him that that guy's account got shut down by PayPal. So you don't want to let that happen to you. And that's why diversifying the you know payment processors and so forth is a good thing for your business and a good thing for your affiliates. Second of all, ClickBank is your bookkeeper and affiliate manager. You know, keeping track of all your bookkeeping and your sales and this and that, and your refunds and so forth is a very tedious thing. And if you were to hire a bookkeeper or an affiliate manager, affiliate manager meaning somebody who pays your affiliates, it would cost money. So. ClickBank does charge a processing fee. I believe it's like 7.5% plus a dollar. And sometimes they can change. So you want to look at their website. But, you know, if you run your affiliate program through ClickBank, they do have a high processing charge, but they pay your affiliates uh, via direct deposit every two weeks. Uh, so let's say you have 100 affiliates and they're making sales each month. You don't have to worry about paying them yourself, you know, paying them your yourself and keeping track of the bookkeeping and everything like that. ClickBank does all of that. So that's that's the beauty of ClickBank. Another thing is ClickBank has a large affiliate sales force of over 100,000 plus affiliates. Now that's not going to mean that you're going to have 100,000 affiliates promoting your product. That does mean that you have uh, the ability to put your product in front of all of these affiliates. And what happens is that many affiliates actually go to ClickBank Marketplace because they're looking for products to promote. So if you're listed out there and you do follow this video series in terms of, you know, setting up your product right, getting up your product, uh, putting up a good description about your product and how affiliates can make money off of your product, uh, that, that increases your chances of, you know, increasing your exposure to these affiliates. And last but not least on this list is the affiliate payment refund backup or safety feature. Whenever somebody asks for a refund, you need to have money set aside. So ClickBank, what they do is uh, they, they'll set aside a certain amount of money. So if somebody needs a refund, 
you know, they'll, they'll take care of all of that for you. So that's a good plus. Now there's a lot of other things. Um, another thing also before we go move on to the quick overview is they do allow one time or monthly recurring product support. What that means is if your product, you know, you charge a one time fee, then ClickBank supports that. Or if you have a monthly membership site and let's say you charge a monthly fee every single month, ClickBank also supports that. Now let's move on to the quick overview, which is the second part of this specific video. And in the quick overview, I'm going to briefly talk about the videos themselves so that you can understand you know what we're going to talk about in this video course so that it can prepare you for uh, the this whole video course as a whole I believe that once you understand that you will be able to put all the pieces together and you'll be able to get rolling so it's kind of the planning process right now and I want you to think about uh, all these things as we go over it video number one is of course this introduction to the surefire Clickbank mastery video course that's this video Video number two, we're going to talk about pro what products are allowed. Uh, certain products are allowed on ClickBank and certain products are not allowed. We're going to cover that and we're also going to cover the do's and the don'ts. So if you're in a rush and you're, you're wanting to just go ahead and start, you know, creating a ClickBank account and create a pitch page and so forth, you can do that, but with warning that if you don't create a good pitch page and it does not follow ClickBank's rules and regulations, um, all that work will be lost. So you definitely want to make sure that you look through these few videos to prepare you uh, on how to do that. So video number one, number two, and number three are going to be PowerPoint slides. I know they can be somewhat boring or they might be interesting. Um, but video four through ten are going to be screen capture videos and you will be able to see for yourself look over my shoulder and follow step by step alright so video number two, three is going to be the vendor checklist I'm going to give you a checklist of things that you need to have ready before you move on to number four video number four we're going to talk about how to sign up with Clickbank now while that does seem like an easy process uh, there are some few tips and advice that I want to give you to prepare you in terms of creating a good username that will help you in the long run. Video number five, we'll talk about how to create a pitch page and a thank you page. What you need to have in the pitch page, like requirements and so forth, money back guarantees and so forth. The pitch page is a very important part you know of getting approved at Clickbank they look at the pitch page more than they do often with the other links like the payment links and so forth um, because that is the first thing that the customer sees and if they if you are using the Clickbank network um, their reputation you know they're looking it out for themselves too and their reputation is a definitely important part so they want to make sure that you follow their rules and regulations and we'll help you do that in that video. Video number five is we're going to talk about creating a thank you page and a download page and you know how to create links to your website so that they can download your files and so forth. So we'll make sure that we cover just about everything you can think of in terms of a download page or a thank you page. Video number seven we're going to talk about how to make a payment button and payment link and add that payment link or button to your pit page and your sales page. Video number eight, we're going to talk about how to upload files through FTP. Uh, for example, you know, once you're done with your thank you page and your sales page and your pitch page and so forth, you need to upload the files through FTP to your web hosting account so that everything is up and live. So you need to do all of this before you actually uh, submit your your links and so forth to uh, Clickbank for the first time and get approved and so forth and video number nine is the site information completion page we're going to talk about what you need to do to uh, complete your site information how to 
what you need to write to ensure that when you do post it to the marketplace that affiliates know exactly what your product is about and so forth. And of course, last but not least, video number 10, we're going to talk about the test payment link. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to test out the whole process to make sure that your sales page works, the payment button works, and once the customer uses it, it'll go to the, the download page and they get the delivered product. And let's talk about the tools you're going to need. You're going to need a product. We're not necessarily going to talk about how to create a product in this specific video course. So I'm going to assume that you have a digital report, whether that means a report, an ebook, a software, a video course, or more. You're also going to need Composer, which is a WYSIWYG web editor tool. What that means is a web editor tool is a tool that allows you to edit web pages, like the pitch page or the thank you page. In order to get those files onto a website, you're going to need something called a file transfer protocol software, or what you call an FTP software. In this case, we're going to use FileZilla. FileZilla and Composer are all free. So the only thing you need to invest money into is if you're going to create your digital report, your digital product, um, and an activation fee for ClickBank. They do charge a $49.95, I believe it is, a activation fee for one-time activation fee. Once you're activated, you can add a, you know products and this and that in the future. And of course, you're going to need the internet. So with that said, let's move on to video number two. Let's talk about what products are allowed. Now, video number two and video number three are fairly quick. Uh, so that will prepare you for videos four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Hey, and welcome to video number two. We're going to talk about what products are allowed and what products are not allowed. And we're also going to talk about the do's and the don'ts. So let's go ahead and get started. What products are allowed? Well, they must be original to avoid copyright issues. So original means you created the product. It does not mean that you buy a private label rights product and you can put it on ClickBank. Uh, you will see some private label rights products, but you know there's no guarantee that those people will be staying up there. So by legally, ClickBank rules say that you must be the original owner. Uh, so if you do take a private label rights product and you do change it around completely, graphics, sales page, you know, everything in it, and you do complete, you know, change it to the point that it becomes your own product, then that's a possibility. You might want to run that by ClickBank first. The product itself must be a digital product and delivered digitally through your website. So that means that it's got to be downloadable. So let's say, for example, that you buy a product and it's got to be something that somebody can download, they can watch on your website, they can use it, and so forth. Now you can, however, you can ship, for example, books, CDs, and DVDs to your customers. But that product, you know, can be complementary to the main product which means that your main product is something that they can download. So complementary, say for example, that it's you've got a video course like this one, and they don't necessarily need a report, uh, but it's an optional report that you include with the product. So you also might want to run that by ClickBank as well. But if your product is only a DVD and you ship it through Kunaki and that's it, and that's your main product, uh, then ClickBank is not going to approve uh, that product unless it's, you know, they're able to download it immediately within, you know, let's say a few minutes or a couple hours. Now let's talk about the types of products that ClickBank does not allow. Now, you can check this list from ClickBank, um, but pretty much what ClickBank wants you to do is they want to make sure everything is original 
and not copyrighted content. So number one, you don't want to have content in there that belongs to somebody else. If it belongs to somebody else in any way, whether that's pictures, content, text, movies, videos, games, music, and so forth, then you definitely want to avoid that. So anything that's copywritten by somebody else, if it's a PLR, privately rights product, and you did not create that privately rights product, then you probably don't want to put that up on ClickBank. There are a lot of ClickBank like PLR based products, but that's a risk that you will take. That's a risk that you will take that, you know, might close your account down. So you definitely want to avoid doing that. Now, anything illegal, anything unethical is generally what ClickBank does not like. However, some people's definition of legal and unethical can be different. So that's why there's this list of products. Number three, we have spyware. Obviously, you know, you can have an anti spyware software, but uh, you don't want to be selling viruses and spyware. And people do that. Um, anything with existing debts, uh, promissory notes, digital cash, spending counts, money transfers, gift certificates, and most likely, uh, a lot of these things is because somebody else did it and it just didn't work out. Uh, you got security, stocks, bonds, deeds, titles, lottery tickets, sweepstakes, wagers, wager pools, gambling, or betting of any kind. Uh, there used to be a lot of gambling uh, products, but a lot of them were pulled off. Um, uh, pornography, any type of pornog pornographic entertainment. Uh, Juarez. Juarez is basically like illegal stuff. Um, pirated software, pirating tools, hacking tools, uh, proxies, um, remote bots. Proxies are basically IP addresses, um, shell accounts, dial-ups or dial-ins, phone services, phone minutes, cell messaging, SMS type stuff and if you really don't know what this stuff is then then good you, you don't have that product uh, Spamming type tools fake ID tools credit reports credit repair uh, Professional services including accounting legal medical pharmaceutical services And if, a lot of these like I said credit reports and credit repair. It's also because you know FTC Clickbank is ruled in is in the USA so you know, the FTC, where the FTC says not to do, they try to avoid that as well because uh, it just makes their lives more complicated. Social security number searches, uh, term papers or other academic works, anonymous proxies, proxy lists, password lists, hotel and travel reservations, seminar tickets, vouchers, event reservations, Franchises, franchise opportunities, MLM type stuff, basically pyramid stuff, products about marketing through Craigslist or social networking sites like social media type stuff, any materials containing and endorsing discrimination, violence, hatred, revenge, racism, victimization, criminal activity, and any other category ClickBank decides to prohibit. So... The last one is kind of vague, but obviously anything illegal, you want to probably move away from that. It's always good to check with them, contact them first, and you know run your product by them if your product is somewhat borderline, uh, something that you might think would be prohibited uh, by ClickBank. So that way you don't have to go through the process of setting up your site for ClickBank specifically only to find out that it's not going to be approved uh, that's happened to several people before and you definitely don't want to avoid that um, I didn't see list building on here but I do believe they don't like list building type products uh, but like I said go ahead uh, check with Clickbank make sure that the product is compliant with their system because they can always add to this list now I want to talk about the do's and the don'ts. 
two things, uh, you, several things, but the first two things are primary. Uh, number one, your pitch page must describe the product clearly. Uh, that's a biggie. I've had my product approved and disapproved several times because the pitch page was not necessarily clear. If your sales page is not clear as to what it is selling, what the person gets, and then how to buy the product and have a money back guarantee, uh, then they're not going to approve that. Especially they look specifically on your money back guarantee. If your money back guarantee is like, okay, no refunds, then it's not compliant to the ClickBank network because they offer 60 days refunds. So if you want to sell on ClickBank, you've got to comply with a their pitch page rules. And I'll go over that when we create the pitch page. Number two, your thank you page must give the product or give instructions on how to get the product immediately. So let's say for your example, your thank you page is your download page. If your download page you know, has the files and great, but let's say you're using some sort of script like a member pro or some sort of security script that requires them to create an account so that they get the downloads. You need to make sure specifically that okay number one you need to do this you need to create your account to get the files and so forth you need to be very very clear otherwise Clickbank will look at that and they'll say oh it's confusing uh, you need to fix this and that so you want to make sure that you get everything right the first time so that you don't have to get disapproved you know and, and go through the process of doing that so you definitely want to double check before you submit your product for approval because let's say for example a recurring billing products uh, Clickbank says that there are no changes that can be made to recurring billing products after they are approved so you want to make sure that you get it right the first time another thing that they want is pretty obvious but a lot of vendors do miss out on this you want to make sure that you support your customers via email phone or help desk you don't have to do phone as long as you do via email and help desk but you want to do this to prevent you know refunds and chargebacks and Clickbank does monitor your refund rate and your chargeback rate so if you get a lot of refunds and you get a lot of chargebacks a lot of times they will actually ban you from their network so you definitely want to make sure that people are clear you know that you will honor your refund uh, your money back guarantee and your refunds and your charge back to avoid those chargebacks uh, because when they do charge back you have to kind of pay a fee with any payment processor you know a PayPal or Clickbank uh, so you definitely want to avoid that and even if you do get a charge back that doesn't always mean it's your fault it just means that the customer didn't contact you uh, to get that refund and <clears throat> another thing they can also contact Clickbank to get a refund as well and also you want to do make sure that it's easy for affiliates to promote your product you want to make sure that you provide them with the necessary tools to do so so that they can bring sales to you and that's the beauty you get people promoting your product even though you might get you know 25 to 50 percent commissions you're really not doing much except the affiliates doing all the work you're just providing the product itself and the support a couple don'ts there's not a lot of don'ts but basically if you as long as you comply with Clickbank rules then the don'ts that are left are you don't want to ignore your customers unless you want refunds and chargebacks and bad feedback so definitely keep your attention on your customer and make sure you take care of your customer don't skip video number nine video number nine we're going to talk about how to choose the right categories how to add the correct marketplace title description and so forth before you pay your activation fee so you definitely want to make sure you get everything right because this is one of the fundamental basics and don't violate trademark copyright law or DC, DMCA which is the Digital Millennium Copyright Act 
So you definitely want to make sure the product is yours. You don't want to violate copyright. You don't want to use pictures that are not yours. And if you do use pictures, and make sure that you use a royalty-free site like bigstockphoto.com or istockphoto.com. So with that said, let's move on to video number three. We're going to talk about the vendor checklist, what you need to have. Uh, we're going to go over to sites and show you what you need to get uh, before you move on to video number four, which is going to be a fun part. You're going to get to see step by step what you need to do and you get to watch some screen capture videos, which are a lot more fun. Hey, and welcome to video number three. We're going to talk about the vendor checklist. Now, this video is going to be split up in two parts. Part number one, I'm going to talk about what you're going to need to have. And part number two, I'm going to go over the list of the things that you need to have and show you where to get them online. All right, so first things first, the first thing you're going to need is, of course, your digital product. Now, you're going to have to have that. You're going to need to have your sales page. Your, you know, If you don't have a download page, that's fine. We're going to go over that. And if you don't have your sales page yet, that's fine. We'll go over the rules and regulations for the pitch page, but you're still going to need to create your sales page later on. So you're going to need your digital product. You're going to need the files in hand. You're going to need a domain name, so you're going to go to GoDaddy or Namecheap.com to get a domain name. And it can't be a subdomain name, it's got to be www.whateveryourdomainis.com or .net or so forth. You're also going to need a pitch page, your sales page, or your thank you page, or your download page, which is two things, pitch page and thank you page. You're also going to need to have website hosting for your pitch page and thank you page. I'll show you where to go to get that. You're going to need to provide customer support via email, help desk, or phone. And recommended, you're going to need either an affiliate page to provide tools for your affiliates. And I'll show you where to get you know banner ads created and so forth you're going to need to add your product to the marketplace listing which of course is just part of Clickbank and so forth and you you might as an option need a vendor hop ad which is an option as well it's it's an ad that you can place on your your website your blog and so forth to get more sales to your product but primarily the things that you're going to need is your digital product your domain name your page page thank you page your website hosting and your customer support so with that said let's move on to part number two where I'm gonna go through the list and I'm gonna show you uh, by a screen capture video exactly what you need and exactly where to get that get those tools and so forth so you can move on to video number four and get everything set up Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to walk through the vendor checklist and show you free tools that you can download right away and start using to apply to your the setup process of adding your product to ClickBank. So the first thing I talked about is you need a digital product. So let's say you do have that digital product since I'm not really talking about how to create the product. Uh, you need to find a way to upload that file to your uh, to your website. So there are several things that you're going to need, but in pertaining specifically to a digital product, you're going to want to zip that file up. Uh, if it's a video and you want to place it on your website, you can do that. But if it's an actual file that you want people to download, then you're going to need to zip that file. So you can either zip that file using let's say a winzip if you have windows all you have to do is right click on a file click on send to and then click on compressed zip folder now if you don't have that let's say you don't have that then you can go to google and type in winrar 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 is a free uh, tool if you go to rarlab.com 
It's basically a program that allows you to zip your files and squeeze your files as small as they can be. Uh, WinZip zips your files, but it doesn't really have the option to squeeze your files, you know, smaller and smaller. So for example, this is a 48 megabyte file. Let's say I want to zip it. If I right click and click on add to archive and I'm using WinRAR and I click on zip and I click on the best, that means it's going to squeeze it all the way down as much as possible to get that file as small as possible. It may not make a huge difference, but it could be the difference between a few megabytes, which if somebody is downloading your files using a dial-up connection or a very slow connection, that can mean a difference between the weight of a, a few seconds to a few minutes. So that's just something to keep in mind. So you're going to need to have the ability to zip your files and then upload them to your website. So the next thing you're going to need is a domain name. You can either use two things. You can either use GoDaddy, and you're not limited to using GoDaddy or Namecheap, but GoDaddy.com is pretty reputable, and Namecheap.com is also reputable. I use Namecheap. I love Namecheap you know they've been great and all they do is sell domain names and other things but I use them primarily for domain names so if you need a domain name all it is as you can see is I think it's about nine dollars and forty something cents and another thing I I would suggest is if you do get you know you go to Namecheap and you do get a domain name go look for like a Namecheap you know 2011 coupon you'll find some coupons and you'll get you know a dollar off here and there so it's it's not a whole lot of savings but you know it is savings so that's just something to keep in mind and as go, look for GoDaddy as well you're gonna need a pitch page and a thank you page for your product now there are two things in relation to this um, or actually three things the website hosting you're gonna need the ability to upload files from your computer to a website so you're going to need some sort of FTP file transfer protocol program and you're going to need a tool that will create your HTML pages, your thank you pages, your your pitch pages and so forth so those are three things in addition to the domain name and so forth so you're going to need web hosting. There are two sites that I can recommend personally that I've used that are great. If you only have like one or two sites, then I recommend something like HostGator.com. If you go to HostGator.com, you can go to the web hosting section, and it's it's roughly about three ninety six a month, which is not bad. And if you view web hosting plans, as you can see, it's really not that bad. And HostGator is very reputable. If you have a lot of had have a lot of websites, let's say you got five, ten, twenty websites, then it's better if you go with a reseller hosting or a VPS hosting. You don't really need a dedicated server unless you, you know, expand and you really don't. You have a lot, a lot of files. So if you're if you have a video product that let's say is one gigabyte and you really need really really fast speeds then you don't really need a dedicated server and as you grow I would recommend a place called serveint.net if you go to serveint.net and you go under their VPS section I would go with something like this instead of going with something like this. You don't need to pay $139. In fact, I've done a lot of launches with big files on this one and this one and this one and you really don't need a lot. In fact, this is a lot of savings and this company is great. Now that's it for web hosting. There are two more things we need to I want to show you. That is the WYSIWYG editor tool so I'm going to go back to Google there's a program called composer and if you go to composer.net you'll find this 
program here download it it's free this tool will be using it in this video series and it's very easy to use the next thing you're gonna need is you're going to need a file transfer tool I recommend a program called FileZilla if you go to FileZilla-project.org it's free download it install it run it and we will use that you will need to have the web hosting information in order to use FileZilla for example your FTP information if you don't know what that is uh, HostGator and Servant will provide you with that information and then you can use that information to basically log into your website and then upload those files so those are all the tools that you are going to need um, with that said let's go to the recommended resources for example the three last three things that we recommended earlier in part number one was an affiliate page an affiliate page is basically a page where you provide your affiliates with promotional tools for example let's say you want to get uh, banner ads created there's a site called twenty dollar banners which is a good site to use and as you can see here you can get good professional banners to use uh, you want to provide you know stuff like articles blogging articles possibly videos possibly Google AdWords ads uh, solo ads and so forth you try to, you want to try to fulfill as many marketing avenues as possible so that you can help your affiliates if you can help your affiliates promote your products then that's great then you can they can add you know your ad to their blog and promote your product so with that said I'd advise you to download those free programs get your website get your domain name and get set up and get ready to rock and roll and we'll move to video number four the fun part where we actually get signed up with Clickbank and we'll get our product onto the Clickbank network alright so you're ready to sign up at Clickbank this process is not hard but there are a few things that you need to pay close attention to that I want to address so what you want to do is you want to go to clickbank.com click on sign up and here's a sign up form essentially you know whether you create an affiliate account or a vendor account it's the same account so when you create an account you can promote products as well as you know sell products so click on sign up or here here fill in the information there's about 145 or more uh, countries and I'm sure they're adding more you want to fill out this information but I want you to pay close attention to one thing that's the the username right here this username or account nickname is very important because it's sort of like the it bridges the gap between your sales page and your thank you page now keep in mind that there have been studies that where somebody goes from your sales page you know they see the Clickbank form and they exit so you want to make sure that they understand that this Clickbank is a payment processor and it's part of your process so when they click the payment button and they see you know that your nickname is related to whatever product you're promoting then they get okay this is just the payment process and this is part of the product I buy through this product and then I will get you know the product so you if you can create a nickname that relates to your niche or your market so whatever that might be just name that account and try to find an account username that is related to that account once you're done with that then go ahead and log in I'm gonna go ahead and log in because I already have an account now before we go out and create the pitch page in the next video I wanna walk you through the Clickbank site now as you can see at the top you have my account 
in this area you basically add your information your information like direct deposit information so uh, people can pay you the Clickbank can pay you and deposit money into your uh, bank account uh, they also do checks and so forth the my site this, we'll do that in video 9 uh, this is the my products page where you add your products uh, standard products recurring billing products upsell products and so forth uh, so this is the section that we'll be working on primarily and this is the my pages section where you can upload images you can change the my order form so you can change the order form which is good because that bridges the gap between the sales page and the thank you page um, one tip is that if you make the order form uh, look more like your site then you can get better conversions that way uh, this is my spotlight this is my ads and you can look at that later and uh, this is the hop ad builder uh, so we're gonna pay closer attention to this area here now what I want to do is talk about standard products and recurring billing products standard products are basically products that you sell and you're only charging somebody like a one-time fee like forty seven dollars and then they get the product recurring billing products are sites like monthly membership sites let's say you run a video membership site and you are providing somebody with every month a brand new product so they're paying you you know seventeen twenty seven thirty seven dollars or forty seven dollars a month every single month um, and you're providing value every single month or that could be a software product and so forth so what I want to do now before I move on to video number five is show you what it looks like to add a standard and recurring billing product so what you do is if you click on this link I'm actually looking at the standard product so if you click on this link you're gonna see the green add new product to the right all you have to do is click on that if you click on the recurring billing products you're gonna say see the same thing the add new product and you're gonna see a list of products if you have them underneath those sections now right now I am looking at the standard product the standard product is a very simple form it's shorter than the recurring section so as you can see here if you scroll down this is all the information that you need to include you need to include the product type is an audio ebook games video software or a one-time membership site um, the item number is basically how many products you have and I already have some products in there but for those of you that are starting out and you've never used Clickbank before you're gonna see a number one here and then you're gonna see the thank you page and the mobile thank you page so you enter your thank you page here uh, you enter the product and you enter the product price here and the language and the product title now you might be thinking well where do I enter the pitch page well you can actually do that by going back to the my site information at the top and clicking on that and then clicking on that and entering the pitch page up there so for example I clicked on my site the link at the top and then you click on the marketplace information editor and then it says hop link target URL this is basically the pitch page uh, so you know if you're just using you know there's scripts out there that will allow you to add like a hop link target URL that will enable you to add more than one product but if you're just doing it manually then your pitch page would basically be put here so if I go back here you enter this information click on save changes and when you're ready to you know get this submitted and approved basically submit this and then you go back it'll go back to the, the page and it'll, it'll have an icon that says uh, click for approval and you just click on that link 
And once you get your product approved the first time, usually the rest of the products can be approved uh, after that. Now this is setting up a recurring product. Um, as you can see, it's the same thing, just about the same thing, the, the product type, item number, uh, thank you page. Uh, everything's the same except uh, the monthly cost. So this part here is different. So you have the initial price, which uh, the customer pays for the first time. And the rebuild price is basically the second month. So the first month you could charge them, let's say, a dollar. And then this, the second month you could charge them, you know, after that, whatever period is after that. So this is the initial price for the single purchase of a standard pro product. And this is what they are rebuilt after that. Uh, this is, you can set the commission or you can change that to something like, 75% and so forth. Uh, you can put a trial period if you want. Um, you can put it for, let's say, for first seven days, um, for a month and so forth. So trial period is basically, you know, dollar for the first seven days. And then after that, you charge them a certain amount for biweekly, monthly, quarterly, or yearly and the duration is as well. Uh, you put the product title and the description, so it's, it's kind of a little bit different than the standard product, but not as different. And in terms of the pitch page, again, you go to the My Site, under My Site and the hop uh, target URL is the pitch page. Uh, so with that said, let's move on to the pitch page creation. In this specific video, we're going to talk about how to create a pitch page or a sales page that is compliant to uh, ClickBank. Now, if you don't want to create a pitch page using the free tools that I'm going to show you how to uh, do it with, if you go to pitchmagic.com, this is actually a site that ClickBank uh, recommends. And as you can see here, ClickBank recommends Pitch Magic, and you can create nice looking pitch pages so this is a drag and drop tool so uh, I wanted to show you this it does cost money though it's a forty seven dollar one time fee or a twenty four dollar a month fee so forty seven dollars is not a lot but if you're you know working on a a low budget then uh, just keep watching this video so the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need a sales page. If you don't have a sales page, I'm not really going to go sh show you, you know, how to create a sales letter and this and that. I'm going to assume that you have a product in hand and you want to go ahead and upload that onto ClickBank. So what I'm going to do is I'm looking around my hard drive and I'm just going to pick out a project that uh, was created a while back. It's a local fan page blueprint video product and this is what the video product looks like this is the sales page and it's pretty much done now you can use pitch page if you want I'm just gonna use this as an example to go through and make sure that it is Clickbank compliant and so that so that you can see for yourself what you need to do for yourself if you don't use pitch magic you can always hire somebody uh, to create a professional looking page like this if you would like to um, but what I'm going to do is go through the process and uh, point out you know what what are the things that you're going to need and so forth and we will actually use a the WYSIWYG tool that I talked about earlier to edit uh, this sales page so what we want to do is we want to look under this folder. I created a ClickBank test folder. And this is the sales page here. If you're starting from scratch and you don't want to use pitch, pay, pitch magic, then what you want to do is create a file called index.html. And the way you do that is if you right click here and you click on new and then you click on let me scroll this over so that you can see it click on new 
click on text document. What you're doing is you're creating a new text document and you name it index.html. So this is .html that that works too, but I already have a index.html file. Now what you want to do is you want to install Composer. If that's installed, if I right click and I open with, you'll see Composer here. If you don't see it, you click on Choose Default Program, browse and look for the in the .exe file for Composer, and which looks like this. Um, but I already have that open, so I'm going to open that with Composer. And if I minimize this a little bit, uh, you're going to be able to see it better. So if I put this in here, as you can see, I can edit the text. You can see announcing the, the brand or announcing the new six part video course that sh shows. So as you can see, it's really easy to edit stuff. You know, you can finally learn how, you know, stuff like that. So it's, it's really, really easy to edit a sales page. And, you know, I could delete that and add a new header, you know, and this and that. Now, what I want to do primarily right now is just to walk through step by step what a pitch page needs to have. Now you can always go to the ClickBank website. They have a list there, and they're always updating stuff. But here's here's pretty much the basics. Number one, you need a detailed description of the product. So if you have a you know headline, subheadline, introduction, and then introducing the product, you need to have a description of what they're going to get. So as you can see here, I've described that they're going to get six videos as part of this whole video series that's what they're going to get so you need to make sure you have a detailed description of the product you're also going to need to have the cost of the product on the page which I have below here it's not sixty seven dollars it's forty seven dollars the cost of the product needs to be sprinkled around the sales page for if your product is a recurring product uh, you need to be clear to state all the details. You know, the first month is being charged this, the second month is being charged this, and so forth. For example, if the initial charge is $19.95 and then every month after that for 11 months, it's going to be $9.95, then write that down. Make sure that that is there. So ClickBank basically wants you to cover your tracks and cover as many tracks as possible so that they don't get, you know, people complaining and, and things like that. So their goal is to lower support as much as possible. Now, another thing is if your product is only useful for customers in a particular geographic region or country, be sure to say so. For example, uh, this product is about creating local fan pages uh, for local companies, creating Facebook fan pages for local companies. Now, does the question is, does Facebook disregard certain countries? Uh, you might want to do research on that, figure that out. Um, to my knowledge, I'm not too sure, but that's something to ask yourself. Another thing is how long delivery takes immediate five minutes and so forth now this is a video product here so it's an immediate delivery uh, so I want to make sure that they understand that they get it immediately so right now it doesn't necessarily say it's immediate uh, so I might need to edit that so I might need to go in here and say that they get the product immediately so I can say so with that said grab this video series today and learn how to blah 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 add this cart for only this um, and let's see here seven and you will be able to download or yeah down let's see be able to watch this video series right away 
So ClickBank has a criteria and they actually look at your page to make sure that you have that criteria. So make sure you sprinkle it around. Watch this video series right away and so forth. And I click save. So I didn't have that there, so I added that. Um, if you have a recurring billing product, you need to make sure how the product will be delivered and how often. Uh, for example, if you sold a monthly uh, newsletter or a monthly product, video product, software product, so forth, uh, customers need to know, you know that they're going to be getting that each and every month. And last but not least, uh, ClickBank wants to make sure that you have a support team, you have an email address somewhere, uh, sprinkled somewhere. So if this is a ClickBank product, you might want to put at the bottom somewhere that uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact us via whether it's email, contact at, let's say, yourdomain.com or eight. 1 800, you know, 888 or 000 000 or whatever. Uh, whatever your contact help desk or whatever, make sure that you have that here. Uh, make sure that you, if this is an email, let me show you how to hyperlink that. If you highlight this and you click on link and you put your email, if you click the above is an email address. Composer will automatically make sure that when somebody clicks that, they can email you. So that's very convenient. So that's pretty much it in terms of a pitch page. Um, one other thing is you want, might want to read this section that says Vendor Promotional Messaging Guidelines. It talks about testimonials and endorsements. Uh, recently, the FTC changed their guidelines in terms of testimonials and endorsements. So you want to make sure that if you do have testimonials and endorsements endorsing your product that you do not allow fictitious individuals or life stories they have to be real or a video you know doing false claims of earnings and this and that um, so you want to make sure that you have that uh, what they do allow is videos and testimonials of people uh, you can read that here stating that they actually made a certain amount of money up to one thousand dollars if that is the case but you need to make sure that they are not fictitious because if the FTC looks at you and says oh uh, I want proof that you actually have it and you don't have proof then that's gonna cause problems and that's gonna cause problems and headaches for you in the long run even if you're in a different country and you're not ruled by the FTC in the USA, uh, ClickBank is going to make sure that you comply because uh, they're located in Idaho, Boise, Idaho, and that's in the United States. So you got to make sure that you comply whether you're in another country or whether you're outside the US. So make sure you do comply with these uh, rules. Another thing they don't allow is false scarcity, which means like only 300 copies left or something like that. Uh, so make sure you read through here. Make sure you have accurate pricing, stuff that's not deceiving. Um, but just make sure you read through here and make sure that it complies uh, with your sales page. So right now I've created my pitch page. Uh, if you don't know how to create one from scratch, uh, let me show you real quick. So I went over the guidelines. I want to show you how to create a pitch page from scratch. Uh, so let's say pitch page.html. Uh, we want to edit. Open this with Composer. And what we can do is insert images. And if you click on image and you click on this and you find where your images are lo located. And this is where my images are located. I've got my header. Um, it's going to put that up here. 
and got my footer and then I can put something like let's say a flat cover and I could put the payment button as you can see here and let's see what we have left I can put something like uh, footer this that and we can put a bunch of products together like a big chunk so now you can see that I've basically plopped a bunch of images like the header the graphic here, little e-cover, the buy button, and uh, the footer. So now what I want to do is basically fill in this area with the sales page, which is very, very easy to do. Uh, what you will probably want to do is you want to center everything. So if you click on edit and select all for now and click on center, that'll basically center everything for you. And you just use this pretty much like a Microsoft Word. So you want to put your headline up here, your subheadline. And I know previously I didn't I told you I don't wouldn't really talk about how to create a sales page and not, but I'm just showing you the structure of everything. Uh, you put an introduction uh, a, and relate, you know, to the customers needs problems wants and desires and then you introduce the product introduce the solution or the product uh, which is down below and here's the thing if if you want to make the headline let's say you want to change the headline uh, to heading one and you want to change the font to let's say Arial and you want to change this to red from black to red just click on this click on like red and you can make it bigger you can make it smaller you know it's, it's just like Microsoft Word there's really no difference uh, you can choose this change the subheadline to like dark blue you can change the font to Arial, we can make it a little bigger, we can italicize it, bold it, and uh, we can underline it as well. And as you can see, you get my point. And right below here, you can create like tables. Let's say you want to create a table like you saw earlier. And uh, let's say we create a table, we create two columns, and We'll create like let's say we'll create this table, but you see these padded lines. Let's say we want to uh, edit the table or edit the cell properties. Actually, what I what I'm doing is right clicking here, uh, clicking table cell properties. Uh, if you notice, click on table and you put zero border. That's this border is going to disappear, and then I'll leave it like that. And as you can see, the border just disappears. I could add an image if I wanted to. So if I had like a check mark image, I could do that. And I could just put text, you know, like video number one, video number two. So I could put, you know, video number one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you pretty much get the point, um, as you can see here. It's really, really not hard. Now, the last thing that you want to add to the pitch page is the money back guarantee, which means that if somebody purchases your product, then if they want a refund within 60 days, you are going to have to give it to them. Because if you're going to add your product onto the ClickBank, system clickbank requires that you give a standard 60-day return 
and as you can see if you go to Clickbank and you look under the refund and cancellation policy uh, it says what is Clickbank return policy it's a 60 day return period it says do any products have a different return policy it says our vendors are not permitted to make any guarantee that conflicts with the return policy so you can't really do a 30 day policy and you can't say no return policy so that's that's another thing you want to add to your sales page and of course to add that that's that's easy all you need to do is write it up and then uh, add that to uh, the index.html page uh, using the composer wizzy wig editor and that's pretty much it and once you're done with that you can submit it for approval and if Clickbank has any questions they're gonna ask you you know to verify and clarify uh, a few things so uh, that that's it and the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to create a thank you page in this specific video I'm gonna share with you how to create a thank you page or a download page essentially the same thing so what you want to do is similar to creating the sales or pitch page you right click you click on new you click on text document and then I'm gonna name it whatever that is thanks whatever dot HTML just make sure that you remember what that is so once you're done with that click on right click open with composer and then we've got a blank page there are three things that you want to make sure that you have in order to comply with the Clickbank rules number one you're gonna need the uh, contact information so put your email put your phone number and uh, help desk whatever that is you need your contact information you also need a statement that says your credit card or bank statement will show a charge by Clickbank or Clickbank now remember that because you're using the Clickbank payment processor it's not really going to show your name it's going to show Clickbank so remember when people buy your product and they look through their credit card statements and if they can't they don't know what that charge really was for they might either do a chargeback or they might want a refund so make sure that you tell people up front and be honest that hey look we're using Clickbank as a payment processor your credit card your bank statement will be showing a charge that will look like this and of course the next thing after that you want to show them how to download the files now I've created a few things already so I've done this I created a headline thank you for your order you may download your videos below uh, local fan page blueprint and here are the the six uh, video products now how can I incorporate this into here so what I normally do is at the top say something like your credit card statement let's say in blue because you want to make sure that it is obvious and uh, perhaps centered up here your Clickbank will show a charge by Clickbank or Clickbank and you don't want to make it too big but you want to make it visible enough that they see that at the top thank you for your order um, usually I put it at the bottom if you need any help please email me at contact at your domain .com, whatever that might be and then I'll hyperlink that at contact at your domain .com. I'll click the above as an email address and click on OK and I'm good to go there so I fulfilled the three things I have the this up here I have the download information here and I have the contact information at the bottom which I'll make this a little bigger and bold it because you know I want people to email me if they if they need help I'd rather them contact me and through that build a relationship with them so that 
you know, if they do need a refund, they'll contact me or because you don't want to have a charge back. You know, getting a charge back, you're going to have to pay a fee in addition to that charge back. So you don't want to do that. Now, along with the thank you page, you're going to need um, these to be hyperlinked to your files. So if I'm just providing videos and I'm just going to put, let's say, a video here, I can do that. Um, but in this case, I actually have files that I've zipped up and I want people to download. So what I, what I usually do is this. What I'll normally do is I'll find the file that in which I want to upload. Let's say I got these, uh, let's see, this file here. And I'm just going to hyperlink one. What I normally do is put the zip files of the product in the same folder as the thank you page. So if you do this, then all you have to do is when you're editing this file here, since this is the second video, all you have to do is highlight it, click on link, and make sure that you copy the the name of the file. Now, if you're wondering how do I do that, if you go over here and you right click and click on rename, make sure you highlight the whole thing and then right click and copy. And then go over here and then copy that here and click OK and click on save. As long as that zip file is in the same folder as the .html page for the thank you page, then all you have to do is hyperlink that and put the file name. If you put it at a different location, then you have to make sure you put it at that location. But for those of you that are not as familiar with that, that's probably the easiest route to go. From that, I need to hyperlink videos 1, 3, 4, 5, and 6. But I wanted to show you that as an example to doing that. So if I close this down and I go to this page and I refresh it, you'll see that it's it's not pretty, but you know, if you click on this, this should download and so forth. So we can see here that it links there. So that's good. That works. That works good. Alright, so now we're done with the thank you page. Uh, we can go and move on to the next step. And the next step is creating a payment link and adding it to the pitch page. And after that, we'll upload all the files through FTP to your website. In this specific video, I'm going to teach you how to make a payment link and then add it to your pitch page. So what you need to do is go to clickbank.com, uh, go to the help center, and then type in the words creating a payment link. Click on enter, scroll down, and then you're going to see a link about bottom of the page creating a payment link. Now the reason why I want to go here is because Clickbank provides you with buttons that you can use on your site. So you can use any of these links if you want to. Um, as you can notice, I already have a link here. Uh, but you can use these images if you want to. So you don't really have to, but they're there if you want to. Now, in order to add this to this page, and I'll show you how to do this. You can use this image if you want, but you have the option to add these two. Let's say that I do, what I want to do is I want to add this here to this page. What I do is I right click, save image as, and I want to figure out what location as to where I want to save the files. So I'm going to save the files to a specific location. I'm going to go to my WYSIWYG editor tool and I'm going to go scroll down all the way to the bottom where the payment button should be and I'm going to put it here. Click on image and then find the image location and as you can see it's right here. Click it, click open, click OK and that's it. So I can use this if I want to but I'm going to delete it and 
Now what I need to do is turn this into a link. Because right now if I save it and I go here and I refresh the page, As you can see when I refresh the page that you see this link, but it's not clickable. I need to make it into a payment link and I haven't done that, done that yet. It's really, really easy to do. If you go here and you scroll up, it shows you the payment link right here. Now you can disregard everything here. Um, all you need is this link here, but you need the item number here. So for example, uh, the item number that I use was item number 35 and under the recurring income part uh, What I want to do is basically highlight this right click and click on copy The vendor is your ID So what I want to do is go back here To my WYSIWYG editor tool scroll down all the way to the button click on the button click on link and then copy this here. What you want to do now is basically change this data to that specific number. So for those of you that are getting started, it's probably going to be number one. And then you're going to change this to your vendor. So whatever your vendor is, change this. And once you're done, click OK. Now I haven't actually enabled the product yet so when I click on this link it goes to this form that says it's not for sale or disabled or whatever so I haven't actually set it up to uh, work yet so and you'll see this if you know your product is not approved yet so I haven't actually activated the product yet um, but now we know that at least it, it, it's working. Um, so once we're done with that, I've, what I've done here is I've, I've made the payment link, I've added the image to the page, and I've added to the pitch page, and we're done. In the next video, I'm going to upload this file through FTP to an actual site, and I'm going to show you how to do that. In this video, I'm going to show you how to upload all the files to your website through the FileZilla FTP application. So of course you need to install FileZilla and I showed you where to get FileZilla in the second video or the earlier videos. Uh, so go ahead and do that if you haven't. And in order to connect to your website you need to have a web hosting account. When you create the web hosting account they're going to give you information like host, username, and password. So enter that into here, which is normally going to look like FTP dot whatever your domain is dot com, your username and then your password. Once you're done with that, click on Quick Connect, and you will be sent to that page. Now, before I do anything more, I want to go to the folder at which the files are located. So the files are located here. And I find the easiest way, if you're using a Windows system, is to locate the folder at, at to which it's located and click on the top here. It's going to share with you the location, you know, where it is. So right click and copy. Go back over here. And FileZilla is split up into two sections. This section over here is the your computer section. So if I go here and right click, paste enter that's the files that I've been working on the right side here is your website so when I connect normally you'll see this stuff here and then you'll see like public underscore HTML or HTTP docs you'll need to find out from your web host where you need to upload the files now if you use hostgator or servant.net it's going to be the public underscore HTML folder once you get here, you're probably going to not see anything here. So what you need to do here is create a folder or if you're going to upload it directly to your main site, all you have to do is drag and drop it into here. But because I already have folders here, 
I'm going to create a new directory called cbtest. Click OK. And this is the location where I will upload the files. Now, as you can see here, I've got the files here. And I'm basically going to drag and then drop it here. Now what's happening now is it's uploading the files from my computer to this area here, which is my website. Now that is complete, uh, here are my files right here. And all I've, I'm pretty much done now. Uh, the next thing I need to do is just add this to the, uh, the product page and uh, the site information and so forth. So, for example, you need to know the location of this index.html. If you upload it to a specific site, uh, then go to that main site and you'll be able to find that. So, for example, I uploaded this. Let's see here, I'll go here. Now I uploaded the files, and as you can see, this is a live page. And I'm basically going to go back here and make sure that the link directly to the thank you page is here. And the pitch page we're going to talk about in video number nine as to where you put that and the site information. In this specific video, we're going to talk about completing the site information and adding your pitch page and so forth. So to get to this page you click on my site at the top and then click on the marketplace information click on the edit button to write and then you'll get this page here. So the first thing you need to do is you need to pick a category, a main category first so as you can see we've got a lot of categories here now this product here fits in the e-business and e-marketing main category. Once you've chosen that category, you're going to see a bunch of subcategories. And I'm going to pick social media marketing and then I'm going to move on to the next step. And as you can see here, it says if you just created your account, your pitch page is going to be located here. So you want to enter HTTP colon whatever your domain is dot com slash um, so actually this would be your domain name uh, so this would be your pitch page so remember Clickbank they want your pitch page to be located on the whatever your domain dot com is uh, you don't need to fill out both of these if you don't want to but uh, it would probably be in your best interest to do so if you can create a mobile hop link target URL so that if somebody's surfing on their mobile uh, phone, their iPhone, their Blackberry or whatever, they're going to be able to purchase your product through that avenue. This is, the, this is what's going to show up in the marketplace. And remember in the marketplace most likely the affiliate is going to promote the product. Uh, so you want to enter the title, whatever your title is. So we could do something like local fan page blueprint um, create Facebook pages fan pages for local uh, brick and mortar businesses uh, and you, you usually want to state what your product is if it's a video course it's a software and so forth uh, you want to include that this video course shows you how to create Facebook fan pages for local brick and mortar businesses and you might want to include some a little blurb about the commissions so that if affiliates are watching this then they know it too so you can give up to you know you can go beyond you know 75 you can give you know 50 you can give 75 percent commission so you could say 
75% commissions for affiliates. And then once you're done, you click on Save Changes, and that's it. Now, when you begin in your first thing, uh, you're going to submit this, and you'll submit the product information. When you submit the product information, and you want it to get it to approve, make sure that everything is right. Make sure that everything is compliant to uh, ClickBank, and submit that, and then wait. Once your product is approved, you're going to have to pay $49.95. Uh, but fortunately, you don't have to create. You don't have to pay that for every single product that you create in the future. Testing your payment link is a two-step process. Step number one: you need to log into your ClickBank account, click on My Site at the top, scroll all the way to the bottom, and look for this box here that says Testing Your Products. Click Edit, fill in the details, and ClickBank will give you a test credit card number as you can see here and it'll give you the card expiration date and the card validation code. Once you have this information in hand you can move to step number two. Step number two what you want to do is you want to go to your pitch page or your sales page and you want to click on your payment button. Clicking on your payment button before you know getting approved to ClickBank will send you the, to this page. Use the information that you were given in step number one and enter that information here. Click on pay now and if the process works, then ClickBank will forward you, you know, to the receipt and to your thank you page and so forth. And that's it. If everything works great, then you're good to go and you can submit your product for approval. If it, you still have problems, uh, double check everything, make sure everything's right. And if you have problems, uh, contact ClickBank. And ClickBank does provide good service as well. But it's a very, very easy process, two-step process that you should be able to do fairly quickly and easily. So congratulations, you are done with this video series. By now, you should be able to understand how to take your product and set it up on the ClickBank network.